Hello everyone, and welcome to Mountain Computers. It's been a little while since I've made a video, but uh, I had something interesting that I got recently, so uh, I decided that I'd go ahead and talk about it. Um, so I'd make a short video for you guys. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about this typewriter. Now, this one has a trick up its sleeve. It's not just a typewriter. If we look around the back, you'll actually see that it's also connected to my Windows 98 computer here. Uh, so today we'll be taking a look at why it's connected and what it can do. Okay, so why don't I start with what typewriter this actually is. Uh, it's manufactured by Olympia and it is an electronic compact 2. Um, all in all, as a typewriter, I guess it's pretty normal for its era. Uh, I believe all of the characters actually take up a full character space. They're all the same width, as far as I'm aware. Uh, it does, however, have this half space key, so I don't know why they have a half space if all the characters are full size spaces. Maybe that's useful for someone who's trying to fill in forms on a document and needs to get the cursor over to, I guess you call that a cursor? Anyway, over to exactly where they need. But um, yeah, in general, it's got a power switch over here, which will turn it on. It's all electric as a typewriter. It does not, however, have a display of any kind built into it for you to see what you're typing. So, in general, it's not a word processor or even one of the kind of hybrids. It is, as a standalone unit, very much just a typewriter. Uh, its behavior is that of a typewriter. So if I hit the lock here, it won't turn back off unless I hit shift lock because this isn't a cap lock, it's a shift lock. Um, like most typewriters. And um, yeah, if I hit the space bar here, you can see that it brings the cursor along there and moves the type carriage assembly over. Um, all in all, it's just a typewriter. However, if we look over here, there's a button that says online. Now, most typewriters wouldn't uh, have something like that. And uh, that's because if I hit this online button, it's going to enable an interface at the back of the typewriter here. Now that is a parallel port connection, which runs over to my computer. And it is there because this typewriter can be used as a printer. So to demonstrate this typewriter's capabilities as a printer. I've gone ahead and loaded a piece of paper here and I have put it in online mode and then on my computer uh, which I have booted up I can show you guys that there is a generic text only registered printer here and so if I go over to my notepad here I've written a short little document I guess to be able to print and if I go to file and then print. You can see that the typewriter takes off. Okay, so we can take a look at what it went ahead and printed here. And you'll notice that uh, first off it takes and prints the name of the document up at the top of the page and then takes a few carriage returns before it starts typing things out. I have not been able to discern why this driver seems to be so bad other than that it's intended to be generic, but it seems that every carriage return it automatically takes an indents the left line for, and then it's not really familiar with the concept of word wrapping, so uh, instead it will just wait until the typewriter recognizes that it's run out of space, and then it'll return back to the edge and keep typing the next character that it receives. It's probably just receiving a string of characters and the driver for some reason will send over the name and a few line returns as the start of a document. Now there is a way to get around this problem and uh, 
It involves first taking and saving this file and I'm going to save it as test.txt and then I'll show you guys in a second what uh, you can do to sort of mitigate this problem. Okay, I've reloaded the same sheet of paper just backwards so that it will print onto the other side here and you can see that I've opened up a Microsoft DOS prompt in Windows 98 and I've changed directories to where I have the test.txt file and I'm just going to run a copy command uh, to take the file and copy it out to the parallel port. In my case my parallel port is identified as LPT2 so if I just run this command you'll see that the typewriter takes off again and once it's done, it doesn't feed the paper the same way that it did before, but you will notice that despite having not done that, it has actually managed to bring the line starts to the left edge of the page. It doesn't have the title at the top anymore. It does have an issue where it won't copy the last line for some reason. And then when you compound this, uh, take and print your next document, the last line of your previous document will be printed to the first line of the next one. So that's kind of an issue. I can work past it by managing to include an extra blank line at the end of something. That's easy enough. Um, this does manage to solve most of the problems though by printing this way. Um, so there's one more thing that I wanted to show you guys uh, regarding uh, ways that I can use this typewriter in interesting ways. So this is a program that I wrote that runs in the console that will allow you to change console graphics in a grid style and then you can export to file. So it will take this grid area here and it will take whatever you've drawn on screen and uh, export it as a text file. So I had originally been using this program to make console graphics resources for games so that if I was writing a game that ran in the console it would be able to uh, import the files that I exported from here and use them in the game but I figured it's a pretty easy uh, method for me to just go ahead and take the exported files from here and put them in a text file. Uh, you can see here that I used the program uh, the other day to make this kind of Easter Island-esque sort of picture with one of the Easter Island heads here and a tree and a sunflower, some what are supposed to be flowers here and like a, a dog I guess. I can take this text file and using the floppy drive that I have attached over here, a three and a half inch one, I can copy that file, this, onto there and then I can take the floppy disk, insert it into the computer here, and then I can copy it to my LPT port right off of the floppy drive and manage to print out the picture. Um, all in all, you can see there's still a problem here where I had a, another print where a character carried over onto this print, so that's not solved, but then this isn't quite correct either, is it? See, the main issue here is that the character set between what UTF-8 is and what this typewriter accepts are slightly different, not to mention that the keys are laid out a little bit differently. So I plan to maybe in the future take a look at just printing out every character on the keyboard, see where they map, and maybe uh, adjust the software so that it accounts for that before it exports the text file. And uh, that would be one way to go about doing things. But there's another problem. 
and that's that uh, the characters don't always perfectly line up between the two sets. Like on this, there's a forward slash, but nowhere on this keyboard is there any equivalent to a backslash. Uh, I guess the default isn't too bad. The typewriter went ahead and took one of these. My camera will focus. Kind of S-ish shapes, which kind of has a backslash-ish characteristic to it, and used that. But there's other places where it's just not making a good uh, association at all. Like, these are supposed to be dashes or underscores, if I remember right. Those are dashes, so these are supposed to be underscores. And these are supposed to be pipes. Well, the keyboard has the capability to print those out. They're here and here. But I have to figure out what character actually corresponds to those, so um, I might be taking and adjusting the software to do that in the future. And then the last thing that I wanted to take a look at was uh, I tried, and so far have failed, to port that software for use on my Windows 98 computer. So I'm cross-compiling uh, with a for x86 specifically instead of x86-64 and I have targeted the .NET Framework version 2 when compiling in C Sharp because I wrote the program in C Sharp um, but you can see uh, even though I do have .NET 2.0 installed here if I try to launch the program that I wrote it starts and manages to print out the first characters onto the display, but then it immediately after throws some kind of exception that causes the program to crash, and I don't have any corresponding .NET debugging tools installed on here, so I'm not really sure what the problem is. Even when I compile it on my modern PC, it will run, so um, not really sure what's going on here. If anyone has any hints for me, Feel free to throw them into the comments, but uh, I think that's it for now, guys. This has been uh, something that I've been looking at getting for a little while, ever since uh, formerly Akabukuku, now Tech Tangents, did a video on a similar topic with uh, typewriters that print. I'll go ahead and toss a link to his video in the description. You should check that out. His, his videos are always pretty good. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much as far as I've gotten with this project so far. I thought a demo of the capabilities would be fairly cool. You know, just by modifying the software over here a little bit, I could manage to print out documents that have the typewritten look to them without having all of the hassle that goes along with the high acuity typing in typewriters. So. That was my main goal here, and I think I've managed to pretty much get myself there. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!